Good morning, everybody. How's it going? <laughs> Happy post debate. I just realized it's uh, <clears throat> 7.21. Might um, encounter that school bus, but <clears throat> I have not been hearing it much lately. So, uh, maybe it changed its route. I'm not sure. I guess we'll see today. Um, anyway, post debate. What do y'all think? What's going on? What are y'all's thoughts? I'll just open it up with that discussion. <laughs> um, <clears throat> sorry about my, you know, and while y'all are discussing that, I just kind of want to throw in there, sorry about this uh, situation I got going on. Uh, I've been sneezing a lot. I think there's been mold in the air. I've been having to take some Allegra. My eyes are all itchy and water, you know that. So, <clears throat> uh, if you're wondering, there's been uh, mold in the area. So, let's go, Minju. My apologies about that. Um, and also, I've been using a lot of coconut oil. So, uh, anyway. So, thoughts on the debate. Um, you know, I thought it, I thought it went okay. Um... Mean Joe, he's walking slower than me today. <laughs> Usually, he's walking me today. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, you know, I guess, um, I don't know, I guess that debate didn't leave me feeling like uh, excited about the day so okay there's the debate let's Benjo you gotta wait Benjo Benjo um. uh, certainly didn't leave me excited about um, You know, uh, getting ready to another day for a fight. You know, there wasn't that kind of quality to it. Um, good puppy, Benjo. I don't know if she follows me on social media. Like I said, uh, I guess I have to assume she doesn't. while uh, simultaneously assuming she's got a minimum of two mortgages in this neighborhood. <laughs> that, that was kind of one of my uh, drawings yesterday that I drew during the debate. <laughs> so there's three eyes. I have to have at least three different sets of, uh, three sets of eyes. I have to have at least three different perspectives um, when viewing this debate. Um, I, just was, I don't really want, want to complain about that. Um, um, but as far as like a situation like this, where I live, I'm going to say, you know, whatever I'm going to say. Uh, but anyway, uh, as far as the debate goes, you know, I, I was left just, you know, just not like, I mean, it, this was from my own personal experience. I watched it with my mom and my sister Tracy. Um, <laughs> they're pro Kamala. So look, me and Tim Walls have that in common, don't we? Um, which, uh, you know, I've already explained a lot of 
uh, you know, in my previous videos about all that, so, um, especially considering, you know, I'm not a public figure, I'm not one mention, um, so not exa exactly everything in common with Tim Walsh, but, you know, as far as, uh, uh, household uh, for two separate candidates then you know oh you know what? I don't think he lives with them I think uh, they probably live in separate households but you know what I'm getting at anyway I bring that up because um, MSNBC uh, the new show that we were, were watching in my household um, <clears throat> had Tim Walsh there uh, for a little interview or chat after the debate. Um, but anyway, no school bus. Yeah, just left feeling uh, just, you know, like, I guess just blah. Not really motivated, not really like, you know, yeah, I guess motivated or invigorated or, um, inspired um one second <laughs> they got some pride of barbados over there i think that's pride of barbados could be wrong i guess i'll show you really quick one second one second oh no Benjo, you gotta wait. Let's go, Benjo. Um, anyway. So yeah, not left feeling uh, inspired or like, um, you know, they talk, I say that because um, I guess the DNC platform is a lot about uh, joy and stuff like that uh, being a, a positive note um, <laughs> and I just want to say I, I didn't leave that debate feeling like positive about stuff so um, what else as far as the debate topics um, I thought uh, they, they kind of had the same debate topics as the CNN debate, kind of, mostly, really. I think the one thing that they did talk about that they didn't at, at the CNN debate was um, uh, the Affordable Care Act insurance, which I thought that was interesting. Uh, health insurance um, um, and and I thought that was kind of a theme of the debate was um, going towards uh, this Trump Obama rivalry Which I guess because of um, President Biden uh, was very much, he was vice president and he was president, so. Um, I guess uh, that's why they did that, but it, it was just kind of like a, I guess like a theme. So I didn't realize um, health care was a big issue um, uh, I don't have any health care so um, as far as uh, this universal health care and having to pay into it 
uh, even if you don't have it, um, you know, has not been a, a, burden, a burden of mine these past four years plus. Um, uh, let's see. Um, and, and again, as far as um, there being like a universal health care, um, I mean, that's one thing to discuss. Uh, obviously, um, I think people um, generally speaking, I think they probably don't uh, maybe want uh, people in government deciding their health care um, I think that's as far as generalities go and stereotypes go I think that's probably a little bit more um, not something you would say of a capitalist country like America right um, and I think the issue with healthcare is, is obviously the uh, the affordability, right? Which I guess it's called. That's what uh, Obama's healthcare was was um, Affordable Care Act or something like that. Um, and I'm bringing, I'm talking about it a lot right now. It wasn't even that much in the debate, um, but like I said, it, it was the one thing that wasn't on on the CNN debate that was discussed. Um, so obviously the affordability of things, um, in healthcare, uh, uh, is an issue, um, and how that can be addressed. I think there's various ways in which, um, that can be addressed, um, which I don't think was discussed or uh, yesterday. So, um, anyway, as far as uh, the moderators and uh, the style of the debate, um, again, there weren't, there wasn't an audience. Um, the mics weren't muted. <laughs> My mom and Tracy. Um, brought that up I didn't have an issue with it um, so uh, we differed on opinions there on this uh, not in ISD school bus route today um, uh, and as far as um, you know there there was an issue of just I guess like letting them talk um, my mom and Tracy were like, yeah, he's interrupting. He's, uh, you gotta, this is why I should have muted the mic. Or, um, the moderator needs to, uh, I don't know, cut him off or something like that. I don't know. Um, which brings me to, uh, an issue, uh, uh, which I think is interesting, but before I, I say that argument, I'm going to say this quick argument of, um, I think it really enhanced the debate that the candidates were, that here were the rules and there was, uh, not so strict about them, right? Um... I guess I can't go into my garage right now. Let's go, Benjo, this way. Maybe he's upset that it's not in ISD school bus room. Oh my gosh, close on the door. I guess I can't go over there. Let's go, Benjo. Um, see. Um, yeah, so anyway, as far as the um, 
structure of the debate. I think they were given like two minutes and then one minute to respond. The mics were on. They weren't turned off when they weren't speaking. Um, <clears throat> and as far as the flexibility that was given there, um, you know, I thought uh, definitely enhanced the debate. Um, Uh, one second. Um. <clears throat> oh. This is how it's going to be. Obviously, I think there should be a restraining order. ADT, everybody. She's never filmed me, pull net. That's what she said. She never filmed me, put it on the internet for uh, monetary or opportunistic gain. Um, so anyway, um, I thought the structure of the debate was um, uh, really enhanced it. I think if they're very strict with the rules uh, that they, the guidelines that they set forth um, would have really detracted, made the debate, you know, less than par. And uh, not speaking in golf terms because that's as good to be less than par, but whatever. Um, I, I, are you wondering if I, my space feels invaded? Yeah, but it does every day right why not just walk through the back out of here while I'm making a video I'm sure that happens every day just kidding it doesn't I guess they're really upset about this uh, NISD school bus route not being a route today so you should have done that before you used to NISD school bus just conjecture just a thought uh, anyway um, So, uh, as far as all that goes, um, I think people uh, like to see uh, two candidates debating. Um, and with that being said, I, I also think some people like to see people getting controlled. Trump should only have two minutes. He should only have... Uh, the option to respond once uh, for one minute um, which brings me to the big argument or another argument uh, that I was talking about uh, <clears throat> is um, you know it's you know you gotta change something up I mean you're really gonna do you really uh, satisfied I say you I guess I'm talking about the DNC and all the moving parts around the DNC particularly those who save chocolate milk um, it's the same structure the same boring you know situation so you're not even walking into anything new not only do you have everything prepared it's the same situation and by that I mean um, I watched pre-debate and post-debate and it was all anti-Trump you know I, a lot of people like Trump maybe that wasn't so in uh, 2016 uh, as far as what was on television and social media, public square. Um, but things have changed. Despite this uh, media apparatus doing their best to make a certain candidate look bad in any way, shape, or form, right? Um, 
you know, I was like, to me, I thought, I thought uh, David Muir as the moderator, I think he did better than Lindsay, uh, what's her name? I don't, I can't remember her last name right now. Um, I thought David Muir, some of the questions were repetitive, um, but I thought as far as substance, um, the question and the follow-up questions were a little bit more, were more on point, more about, well, here's this uh, issue, and then the follow-up question was a little bit, like I said, substantive, substantive, substantive. Uh, had a little bit more substance to it uh, here's the issue and then um, asking about it I thought Lindsay uh, her role as a, a moderator I thought um, her role there was to kind of ask the uh, gotcha questions um, that's what it kind of seemed like to me so I watched the pre-debate and the post-debate and it was all like anti-Trump anti-Trump and um, so it, it was like anti-Trump for most of their little speech and then throughout their speech of them not just being anti-Trump policies but anti-Trump the individual <coughs> and then they would be like uh, part of their uh, when they're bashing Trump would be um, he needs to stop bashing other people there's a certain kind of etiquette and decorum. Is, is that the one thing you forgot about uh, eight years ago in 2016? That's that's why people liked him. I'm not talking about the political class, but I'm just talking about the regular voter and maybe non-voter because that's a big chunk too of the population. Um, it is. 7.43 a.m. I guess that school bus is not uh, driving around today. Uh, anyway, so I just think it's, I mean, to me, <coughs> I see, I watch the, <coughs> excuse me, sorry about that. Um, I watch the, um, you know, people talking, and, and there's certain people who have that kind of strategy, and I'm just like, uh, I can understand why you're doing that. Um, <clears throat> but there's some people who just get sheer enjoyment from being so anti-Trump, um, attacking him personally. I think the majority of their substance is attacking him personally. A little bit of the policy, and again, in a very non-critical way. So isn't that your job? You're not bringing anything new to the discussion that you probably had yesterday, the day before that, and the day before that. And I guess since we're going back all the way to 16, I'm pretty sure you had that job in 2016. So, <clears throat> so I can't imagine that, like, you're, you're completely happy with the same conversation since 2016, obviously. Um, but I just, as, as a viewer, I just thought it it's ridiculous. I, you know, I'm there sitting on the couch watching the TV and all these people are bashing Trump and um, personally. I said, I don't think you'll be able to ha uh, take those kind of personal attacks. I'm just saying. Uh, which is probably why you're in that little group. But anyway, um, it just seems ridiculous to me. that they're, they're attacking him personally on the... Um, issues in a very I don't know I guess lazy way I wish there's an, I could use another word for that but that's just the one I have right now and then so they, they attack him they attack a little bit of the issues and then they say um, he needs to uh, not be childish and uh, uh, react with the uh, act with decorum and not be insulting to people when like every single one of them has there was not one person who didn't spend their speaking time at least having a personal insult or something like that um, so you know I was like you know we've all seen that since 2016 I mean the the veil is gone uh, the curtains are up we can see all behind 
all backstage and stuff, you know. It doesn't land like maybe it once did eight years ago. So I just, I, that's another reason why I was just like this, you know. So as far as the, the moderators, I thought that was Lindsay's whole role of being there. Um, and uh, uh, I just would like to see a debate where I was, I just, why can't you just change up the strategy? Said, why can't you get um, a Republican in there, somebody who uh, uh, is not politically uh, or personally uh, against Trump, uh, and uh, go from there. Why, why don't you switch it up? Why don't you have somebody who's uh, politically against Trump and one who's politically for him? Uh, I mean, it's an ABC debate and they employ people, but why don't you get a Sean Hannity in there? It's another, everybody, guess what? If you, in case you missed it, it's another debate of Trump and another candidate. Everybody's against Trump. And then they go their separate ways. And then uh, it's Republicans and Democrats. Republicans versus Democrats, right? So, I just, you know, I'm just kind of tired of it. It's just kind of like, why don't you just switch it up? If you're, you're really, a, a, the DNC, I'm going to emphasize the DNC. Because, um, you know, I watched the Democratic National Convention and every single one of them was anti-Trump. So if you want to be consider yourself a Democrat, you know, you got to be uh, anti-Trump. You want to speak as a Democrat, you can be Chris Hayes against marijuana legalization, uh, but as long as you're anti-Trump. So, um, I just think it would be better if they just kind of mix it up a little bit said you want to just get mad at this one individual why don't you get a Sean Hannity to um, or a Jesse Waters uh, to be a co-moderator in a debate um, and let's see what unfolds right so um, it's just uh, why not right you know the strategy of just being you know uh, this outnumbered strategy when again the DNC mentions all the time there's tons of Republicans who are anti-Trump and who are voting for Kamala Harris Kamala Harris sorry about that my apologies um, so you know it's all about outnumbering and it, it's just kind of like you know it's not 2016 um, anyway, I'm not being very succinct with my points on this post debate, but, um, which I guess brings me to my last point, um, about this whole, uh, uh Democrat and Republican. Um, because, uh, I think a lot of the issues, um, it was, um, You know, Kamala said, "Oh, she's not trying to take away the guns." So, well, not all, uh, the, not all the DNC think so. I mean, that's not those views aren't shared across the board. There. Um, so, I think in several instances, oh, uh, energy um, production, not necessarily costs, and um, the Second Amendment. I think were two things that were, um, uh, there was common ground, middle ground, and I guess if you're a political commentator, somebody who talks about politics, I guess you can call that maybe, uh, moderate left. Uh, I don't know. So I, you know, I think this whole Democrats versus Republicans, you know, again, I think it's, uh, about being comfortable. Um, some people can think and work whatever their motivations and goals, their day-to-day -day and long-term goals are. 
um, it's better if there's Democrats and Republicans and um, clear lines about it. And I think yesterday's debate kind of blurred those lines a little bit. Um, we talk a lot about climate change, uh, or we, uh, in the debates. Um, you know, that's another thing where I think there, there could be a lot of middle ground there and there could be uh, um, we're talking about energy and, and as far as um, uh, being the producers of it, uh, you know, uh, getting a handle on this, um, for lack of a better word, liquid gold uh, been right beneath our feet, you know. Um, I think we would be crazy to divest in that as a country. Um, so, um, about this, uh, you know, climate change situation, you know, maybe it's all about being prepared for um, extreme weather events. A lot of the times it's how um, people's circumstances uh, during these uh, weather events, right? Um, so maybe it's about being prepared in um, when it's hot, when it's cold, um, when it's flooding, when it rains, and you know stuff like that. Just being aware of something that humans have done for a really long time now. Um, so, and if we are proactive about that, which again, something humans have done for a really long time now. Um, then um, we can definitely look at this climate change issue in a different way. Um, I mean, weather patterns, climate, um, temperature, weather, these are all specific words to somebody who, you know, has an ecology degree, you know, or something like that. Um, so I think, uh, as a, some just an a average person who that they're not that's not their job you know wasn't that part of the infrastructure they didn't talk about that uh, ARPA I think maybe is that what it was ARPA um, they didn't talk about that ARPA very much this will build back better right um, if you watch the debate, or if you didn't, they, they didn't, they didn't, I don't think they mentioned that once in the debate. Um, so, you know, let's, let's be prepared for any sort of potential weather event and or disaster. Um, if you want to talk about the Al Gore climate change, um, then do it. Um, I think a lot of the, again, going back to my uh, argument, a lot of the strategy is saying, um, oh, Trump's wrong, Trump's bad. He doesn't know uh, foreign policy or domestic policy. Um, instead of having such a good argument, right? Their best argument is saying, oh, Trump's wrong. Trump is incapable. Instead of Proving their argument um, and uh, having the substance and the delivery instead of instead of doing that they just attack Trump you know um, so yeah I guess that's really what I have to say about that um, I liked how serious Trump 45 was um, I think it, it goes really well for him as far as uh, a DNC uh, strategizing about that trying to uh, I don't know give him a taste of his own medicine so to speak um, I thought that fell flat so you want to try to be Trump and it's not gonna work you want to try to use Trump's strategy against him because you didn't like when he used his strategy against you for you know I'm guessing um, you know, it's not going to work. 
So what he did was, and I think what successful people do, is it's not this, here's a list of things you have to memorize. And all you gotta do is memorize these list of things and you're gonna be able to keep your job. Um, your job won't be given to somebody else who's gonna memorize that list and say that thing just like you are. Um, but if you read the room, if you read uh, the situation, if you know what you're talking about, if you know what you're fighting for and what you're fighting against, you have a strategy for yourself and um, you have a strategy for yourself <coughs> and um, it works out. So I think they try to use a little bit of this um, If you're wondering, that's not the school bus. So anyway, I just, I guess I'm gonna conclude this video, even though I could always make a part two, but anyway. Um, gonna conclude this video with uh, 7.57 a.m. Um, they, they went the NIC school bus route. I'll tell you right now, that's the busiest street. You gonna go all the way down to Swandale? This one's the busiest street. It's not as busy as Warriors Creek right now. ADT though. Um, anyway, um, like I was saying, uh, I think uh, a reason why uh, Trump is so successful uh, to the voters, the American population, one second. Um, so uh, I think a reason why he's so successful and, and not obviously not with uh, the political class, right? Um, I say that obviously. Oh, one second. Um, I say that obviously because of just uh, some of the news that I watch uh, in my household. Um, one second. Um, is because he's uh, somebody who, uh, Trump, is somebody who is just, knows who he is, know, knows his public figure status, knows um, his environment, and reacts accordingly. Um, like, and I guess, again, just touches on to this point I've been making of um, it's the same boring strategy since the same conversation since 2016 um, you try to manufacture an environment and a conversation um, instead of looking smart you're gonna look stupid um, so you can say all of these things to the voters and it's not gonna resonate it's gonna fall flat because Trump is very good at uh, being in an environment, reading the environment, and reacting to that environment um, instead of a memorized talking point list. So y'all have a good one.